Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Ben and I'm a self-taught web developer who went from zero to paid full stack in eight months via the Yodin project. And in today's video, I wanted to answer or at least give some opinions on a question that I'm seeing more regularly. And that is, is it worth learning web development in 2024? And before I answer that, please do like and subscribe if you find this content useful and leave a comment below if you have any questions or opinions or any ideas for future topics. Okay, back to today's question. Is it worth studying web development in 2024? And I think this is a really good question to ask because lots of things have happened in the last 24 months that have kind of soured the perception of the tech industry. Before I get into that though, I'd like to preface this, uh, this, my answer to this question with, are you someone who's interested in becoming a web developer? Are you committed in becoming a web de developer? Is it something you really want to do? Then I would say the answer to the question, regardless of what's going on in the tech sector is, yes, go for it, study. Okay, you will learn a lot and you'll learn a lot about yourself and you'll learn a lot of useful skills. And chances are, you will find a job if you are persistent, okay? If you're someone who's kind of on the fence, dilly-dallying, kind of uh, drawn in by the allure of tech, but not really sure, then I'd say it's probably not worth studying web development because you will quickly learn that this stuff is not easy it's gonna take a lot of time and commitment and effort. And if you're not invested, then I think your chances of you succeeding are gonna be really low, okay? So that aside, the two big things that have happened in the last 24 months that I can think of that have really impacted the tech sector is the layoffs, as well as the proliferation of AI uh, in society and its use in, in software development. So with respect to tech layoffs, yes, there have been a lot of layoffs, okay? But I think that there are reasons for these layoffs and they can be explained. And just like anything in, in economics, there's cycles. Sometimes you're in a boom, sometimes you're in a bust, okay? And, and right now, there's been a bit of a bust. Now, this is something new for the tech sector because in the last 15 years, developers have not really had a hard time going out and finding jobs, okay? It's, it's, it's been an industry where if, if you've got a year or two of experience or more, you know you're safe, you're gonna get a job, you're gonna go out there. Right now, it's a little different story. You might read of people who are taking lots of time to find jobs, can't find jobs, and you know the reason is because the industry is in a, a bit of contraction right now. But I do believe, like all things, like all cycles, you've had a bust, it will turn around and start to go up again, okay? That's just the way things have always been, socially and economically. And I think there are some pretty obvious reasons, at least to me, why we're in a bit of a bust with tech right now. And I don't think necessarily it's a lot, it should be the long-term view of tech, it should be that it's a bust. I, I, I'm positive, I'm bullish on the long-term view of tech myself, right? And, and that's a uh, perception I've had and it's what helped me continue my learning and it's paying off for me uh, right now because I'm employed and I, I like my job. But during COVID, there were some things that happened that I think have resulted in this bust period that we're in. And pre-COVID even, interest rates were super, super low. Okay, it was super easy to go out and get debt. And tons of companies were saying, hey, debt's cheap, let's go and get a load of debt and grow, right? It was just kind of this thing where we have to grow and we're gonna hire more people, okay? Me personally, I don't think that that's a very good way to run a business, but that's kind of been the ethos in tech. So there's been a lot of growth. And then along comes COVID. At the beginning of COVID, everybody's locked in at home, on their phones, got nothing better to do than buy stuff online and use apps and services that are you know, uh, web, web based. And there was a lot of growth in these companies at the beginning of COVID. And then combine that with cheap debt, what's well, it's like, hey, we're growing even more, let's get more cheap debt, let's get more people, let's hire them and hire and hire and hire. And some of these companies went through massive, massive rounds of hiring. But like everything, COVID was not a constant, it changes. And we return back to kind of a normal state, right? Where we're out doing things and we're not staring at our phones all the time. Right? We're free to travel and see friends and all those kinds of things. Attention and money is being spent elsewhere in the economy. So for this reason, contraction had to happen, right? Because I think we're now in a period of what I call the COVID hangover, where we're reeling from the effects of lockdowns and cheap money, and companies now having to readjust. And one of the big things is interest rates have started to rise, so companies are having to pay off their debts quicker if they want to stay alive. And one of the ways that they're gonna do this is free up money by firing people. It's not a great way to do it, right? It's not good for the companies, it's not good for the employees, but I think it's just a fact of how it's happening. 
So that's why you're seeing a lot of these layoffs happening in tech. To me, it's just poor management, but it's a reality. I wouldn't let that necessarily sour the perception of tech for me and, and, and maybe for you as well, if you agree with me. And so, so we're now in this, this, this recovery period, okay? But this, I don't think is going to last forever. And if you go online and look in Google and say, you know, what's the projected growth of the tech sector in the next 10 years? It's very, it, the projection is, is, is significant growth uh, where there's going to be more demand for developers than there are developers. And this is skilled developers, not just people saying I'm a developer, but people can actually develop, okay? I think there's going to be a lot of growth in this industry in the next 10 years, uh, web development included. There's going to be lots of, a lot more ideas, a lot more companies being started, a lot more need for developers, okay? And one of the big things that a lot of the headlines are focused on is massive companies. There are a lot of small to medium sized companies that out there that never got any head, headline focus who have been growing over the last five to eight years consistently and COVID didn't impact them and they are growing and they are hiring, right? So th there is growth within the tech sector. It's just these big companies, the way their management style went and, and the way they've been managing their debt and growth, they were going through these big boom busts. And all the focus has been on those companies. So I don't necessarily see the tech sector has been uh, in a bust ubiquitously as a whole in the last two years. Certain areas of it, the big, big companies have been, but not for everyone. There's been lots of growth, lots of hiring going on in, in different areas. So, you know, maybe if you're interested, start looking at small and medium sized companies as well. Don't just focus on, on FANG. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's all going to turn around. I, I think that... The economy has got to find a new equilibrium. And once it does, you'll start to see tech companies being a, a little less like, you know, we've got to deal with this, this crisis situation now of, of being overemployed and, and uh, having massive debt. They'll find a new equilibrium and things will start to look better again. Things will start to turn around and there'll be more hiring. And I think you can start seeing whispers of this happening now of maybe the tech sector is, sector is reaching a point of, turning around and hiring beginning again. Okay, I think this is going to start. And I think that this is on the long term view, it's only going to grow in terms of need of developers. And I see a role as a developer or, or your role in the sector is kind of like long term investing. Some days it's going to be up some months, it's going to be green, some months it's going to be red. Don't get excited or disappointed by either of those months. Okay, it's the long term philosophy and strategy. Where do you see things going? And for me, I just, I see growth. Um, and, and, you know, this is, this is backed up by a bit of gut feeling of, you know, where's the, where's focus going to be placed in, in society and, and uh, in business. And tech just seems to be the obvious answer. But also, you know, there's, there's plenty of data in Google that's pointing to this growth as well. And then with, with respect to AI, AI has been a significant game changer and unknown that you know, it was unpredictable. Uh, and it's certainly making its rounds in tech and being used in tech. And there is no shortage of headlines about AI and um, sensationalism around, oh, will it or it will replace developers. But I think this is all just that. It's sensationalism right now. This is people trying to get clicks. It's all clickbait stuff, okay? In the company I am at right now and with many developers that I've talked to, AI is very handy, but it is not replacing developers right now whatsoever, okay? It might help people who are just in that gray area of like, I kind of know how to write HTML and CSS, but I'm not sure. And they would have originally gone and hired a developer. Now they can maybe figure something out on AI. It's really good at simple boilerplate stuff. But you, you, you inject any nuance of, of domain uh, specific logic into AI, uh, it's, it's not good. It's just not there yet. You need humans. You also need humans to take a concept of UX and turn that into code that actually achieves the criteria of that UX and what it needs. AI is just not there yet. It is just another tool. Just in the way tech, there's always new tools being developed that help people make more efficient. AI is just another one of those. Okay, you got ChatGPT, you got uh, GitHub's Copilot. They're, they're handy, they're useful, they are another tool, they may accelerate your learning, they may make you more productive, 
but at the end of the day, they are not replacing you as the developer who's typing into that IDE. It's just not happening yet. And I don't think we're anywhere near close to that happening, at least in the, I can't put a number on it, but my gut is telling me that into the future, AI will not be replacing most developers. Developers will just be using AI as a tool to become more efficient. But along with the growth of the tech sector in general, I still think there's a lot of potential growth to absorb more developers coming into the field. Okay. And what else could we say on AI? I don't really think there's much more to say. I think there's been a lot of hype. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm going to use it. I'm going to learn how to use it. Right. You don't want to become a Luddite who doesn't understand how to use AI to your benefit. But I wouldn't worry about it uh, replacing you. So I think for those two reasons alone, I'm still bullish on being a developer, uh, at least for the next five, 10 years. OK, beyond that, it, it just doesn't make sense to try and project anyway. No one can predict beyond that. Um, it, but I'm, I'm bullish on it. I'm happy to have entered the industry and I'm only optimistic for my future in this industry uh, moving ahead. I, I think there's only going to be growth and potential for my own personal growth in many different ways. Uh, okay, getting into the tech though, it is tough. And I'd say what I want to end on on this video is um, just the whole situation around the oversaturation of junior developers in tech. And I think with the proliferation of boot camps and uh, online learning resources, anyone can kind of go out there and say, I'm a web developer now because I've done you know some certificates or or a boot camp, but they don't necessarily possess the skills that are needed by a company to fulfill that role that they have open as a web developer. So what I'm saying here is there are a lot of people out there calling themselves developers who are not really meeting the bar of being a developer. But this creates a massive saturation because the market is moving towards an area and most companies have moved towards an area where they're not requiring degrees. They are allowing applications from people without degrees. However, how do they filter out those people who call themselves web developers who are not really that, who don't meet the bar versus those who do meet the bar? Okay, this is a really tough challenge for people who are doing hiring. And I think it's on you to separate yourself from your competition. Okay, and I think doing a, a course like the Odin Project is a good way to do that. Though, I would still say I would go a step further. And the Odin Project projects are very good, but I still think you need to separate yourself more distinctly from your competition so that there is no question that you are actually meeting that bar and are a good, a good bet as a junior developer. And I think one of the ways you're going to have to do this is to create a project that stands out. Uh, separate from what you might make in the Odin project, separate from what other people are doing. Okay, I, I think uh, this is the only real way to prove that uh, you are who you say you are. And another really handy thing to do is to network. You've got to build networks. You can't just expect to study, build a couple projects and throw out some resumes. You've got to put some time in to meet people, develop some relationships. It's another way of proving you are who you say you are and that you can meet that bar as a web developer. Okay, these are just some thoughts on the future and whether or not it's worth learning web development in 2024. My short answer is if you want to be a web developer and you, you have what it takes to, to learn it and you, you're committed to learning, then yes, I, I still think the future is bright. The caveats being you've got to figure out a way to stand out from that flood or sea of junior developers. Once you do that and you get your first job and you start developing uh, experience in a professional capacity, things get a lot easier in terms of finding new jobs. Okay, you just got to figure out solve for that equation of getting your first job. Okay, hopefully this helps uh, some of you answer that question of whether or not it's worth learning web development in 2024. What do you think? What are your opinions? Is there anything here that I'm completely missing? Do you agree disagree with anything? I'd love to hear uh, what your thoughts are. Okay, we'll uh, see you in the next one. Thank you.